Uh, I'm glad to be here with you today to launch uh, the racial equity impact assessment tool that has been developed over the past year. I would like to thank all those who contributed to this collective effort. In particular, uh, I thank Lydia Vincent Marquez and the Irene de Prada from the Rights International Spain for their very fruitful collaboration. Uh, allow me also to extend uh, my thanks uh, to the members of various working groups who have worked tirelessly to make this project happen despite the difficult conditions of the COVID-19 pandemic. I should also mention uh, all those who contributed to this project through their inputs and support. Uh, you may know that uh, last week uh, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights released uh, her report on systemic racism in which she calls for transformative change for racial justice and equality. Um, the racial equity impact assessments are the tools that we all need uh, at all levels, international, regional and especially national, to realize this transformative change. Laws and policies that appear neutral may actually have discriminatory effects. The racial equity impact assessments will allow for making visible the systemic racism, systemic racial discrimination and unbiased underpinning policy making. More than that, the tools that you have developed gives a real voice to the communities of people of African descent in decision making processes uh, that affect them all. From the design of the racial equity impact assessments to their implementation, this project is an example of what meaningful participation uh, of ethnic communities may mean. I encourage all of you to take up this tool and make extensive use of it because it represents an important asset for achieving racial justice and equality. Uh, our office, UN Human Rights and uh, the Anti-Racial Discrimination Section team uh, stand ready to support you in this endeavor. Uh, other, over the past years, OHCHR has developed uh, itself several tools to document the structural discrimination and inequalities faced by people of African descent and to inform decision-making processes at national level. Uh, as an example, uh, together with the Economic Commission for Latin America, we developed racial equality indicators for national data collection processes in order to measure inequalities between populations of African descent and the rest of the population in Latin America. In December 2020, the Working Group of Experts on People of African Descent released uh, their own operational guidelines on the inclusion of people of African descent in the 2000, in 2030 agenda. These guidelines uh, are a tool for UN country teams member states, uh, financial and development institutions, and all uh, other interested stakeholders, uh, and the guidelines can assist them to implement the 2030 Agenda and its Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and what is important that the specific focus uh, of this document is on people of African descent. The UN human rights mechanisms, in particular the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, the Special Rapporteur on Racism, and the Working Group of Experts on People of African Descent, they all have done an important work in documenting human rights uh, violations faced by people of African descent uh, globally. And <clears throat> they formulate uh, numerous recommendations uh, to member states uh, and other relevant uh, stakeholders to improve the situation. Yet this mechanism cannot alone make a difference. Their power uh, in the end rests on the information submitted by national actors, by states, national human rights institutions, civil society, organizations and others. The racial equity impact assessment uh, allows uh, producing accurate and relevant information that can feed into the UN human rights system. Uh, and to make it work, I encourage all of you to engage uh, more actively with the UN Human Rights Mechanism. I thank you and I wish success uh, to this meeting. Thank you very much.